Hey guys, here we go into a video kind of breaking down um, a little bit of Jamal Charlo and his performance against Brandon Adams. And then we're going to do a little bit of film on Andrade versus his and his performance against Selecki uh, or Selinski. And we're going to kind of talk about at the end of the video um, where each fighter should go from their performances and, um, you know, kind of talk a little bit about the middleweight division. Um, but let's go ahead and get into it. And the first thing I want to talk about before I start the clip is the lack of setups for uh, Charlo. You know, Charlo's a very basic fighter, you guys. I know you guys don't want to hear this. I know all you Charlo fans. But um, he he doesn't have great... He doesn't have, I'll say, any defense. Um, very little defense. He does have like a little bit. but And his offense is very basic. Um, he has great punch technique. Uh, he's, he's a hard puncher. He's fast. But um, as we see in the clips... He just kind of unloads his punches, you know, right? This is a real jab. He's committing to a right hand here. He realizes he's going to miss, controls him with the lead hand a little bit there to get in position to throw the right hand again. But look at how all of these punches, he has no idea how his opponent is going to react to these shots. And that's why he's his opponent is able to get out of the way of, of all of them is because he's, he's letting him know that this is going to be the next punch. Hey, jab, right hand, jab, right hand left hook he's letting him know because he's not fainting with any of these shots none of them are probes none of these punches are are in an effort to get brandon adams out of position before he actually commits to a shot now this is really bad especially if you fight a counter puncher like somebody like canelo if you're committing to all your attacks as soon as you commit you walk into a shot or like you you come in throwing a shot they're going to walk you into another one you know, because their weight transfer is going to come with a punch as they get away from your shot, right? Slip, come back. This motion right here, he could be coming back with the right hand right here. Boom, right hand right there over the top of that left hand and just cracking, knocking Charlo out or down or whatever. The one thing that Charlo does do really well here after he throws this left hook, he moves off the line really well. And that's really important. That is good. But again, in this next clip, just coming in there throwing punches, you know, and look at how easily... Brandon Adams is able to get away from all of them, you know? Even this 1-2 right here, 1-2, Brandon Adams gets away from it very easily because there's no setups. No setups to the jab right there. Look at how he just kind of, look at how far away before he initiates his attack. And look at how, how awkward he is. I want to point this out too. Watch when he steps. He steps on his toes. And look at how slow he is to get back on the line, right? Boom. He's real awkward right there. There's a lot of... I don't know how to how to describe it because he's stepping on his toes and not in his heel. He can't keep his weight, his momentum going forward, so he kind of shuffles. But again, no setup, right hand, left hook, and Brandon Adams, who's Brandon Adams, you know? How great of a fighter is that guy that he's getting away from these shots from Charlo? Nah, eh, pretty average. You know, if somebody throws a, a jab at you, right, what do you do? Oh, you block it or you move out of the way. They throw a right hand at you. What do you do? You move out of the way. They throw a left hook at you. You move out of the way. That's basic boxing, you guys. This is the barrier to entry. That if Just being able to do that stuff doesn't make you a great fighter. It just means that you're doing just enough. And Brandon Adams is getting away with doing just enough against Jamal Charlo because of the fact that Jamal Charlo doesn't know how to set his punches up. Is committing to this jab and telegraphing the fact that you're going to throw a right hand after, is that is that good work? Nah. And then again, you know, you get a real demonstration right here of the lack of an active guard that Charlo has. And this is probably his biggest problem is that his weight is always in one place. It's always in one place. His head is always in one place. His body is always in one place. And the only time that changes is when he throws a punch. And it looks like this punch lands here because my quality is really bad, but it actually misses. He actually misses that jab, but that's because he doesn't have an active guard. He has no way to surprise his opponent or change rhythms or patterns on his opponent to hide his punches because he doesn't have any rhythms or patterns. He's just standing straight in front of his opponent and allowing him to throw punches at him. Or th and then throwing punches at him. Now this clip right here, this dictates, or this this is exactly what I talk about when, when I talk about how badly you need to transition your weight when you walk forward. He gets walked into this punch 
Because look at how he shuffles forward. He's not transferring his weight. He's not bobbing and weaving and giving different looks. He's kind of shuffles forward, and then Brendan Adams catches him with this left hook. Now, it's not super clear, but you can see his glove on his face right there. Boom, catches him with that left hook. Bop, right? Oh, actually, now that I look at it, it might actually just be uh, Jamal Charlo's uh, glove. I didn't know he had red stuff on his glove. But if you listen to this fight and you look in, and you can see this punch, you hear it land um, on Charlo. But look at how Brandon Adams doesn't have to set that shot up. Look at this punch that Brandon Adams is landing on Charlo right now. When was the last time you've ever seen any elite fighter get hit with a... When was the last time you've ever watched someone in a championship fight throw a punch like that and have it land? And it lands on Charlo. He has no defense there. Again, no defense here either. Just coming forward, you know, and and Brandon Adams just kind of leans into this jab, lands a jab, right? But no setup to it. And then here, very basic feints, right? Shoots the jab up top first, feinting with that shot, and then committing to the jab to the body. Just going straight in with the jab. Look at how far away he is from Charlo, and he lands that jab. But notice, Charlo is not landing these punches on Brandon Adams. Think about that. The huge distinction between that. When Charlo jumps forward and throws his random jabs, Brandon Adams is able to get out of the way and get away from more punches. But when Brandon Adams throws random punches at him, he connects, right? That's because Charlo has no active guard. He's completely stale, whereas Brandon Adams, you know, even though he's not a great fighter, right? He's constantly in motion, you know, giving his opponents different looks. Look at, like, even though it's not super active, right? Look at look at his active guard here, right? Shuffling forward, right? Just look at how active he is right here, right? Boom, boom, boom. Three different looks in one second to land that shot, you know? Whereas Charlo is stuck in this position and it's, it winds up being easy to walk him into this right hand right here because he has no active guard. He has He's not in motion. He's, he's, he's trying to lock up and be in position, but but it stops him from being able to transfer his weight and get out of the way of punches, um, especially if you're going to be in this position and you're not going to control your opponent. You're not going to be feinting them. You're not going to be using lead hand dominance. You're not going to have any control tactics against your opponent so you just allow them to do whatever they want. So he says, okay, I'll come here and I'll feint the jab here and go and walk you into a right hand. And all of that is because of the fact that Jamal Charlo doesn't know how to control the space between him and his opponent. And also, he doesn't have an active guard. He's just stale. He's just stuck there. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the Andrade film study. So what I want you to watch on Andrade is look at how his active guard he is, right? Or look how active his guard is. Changing levels. And look at how after he changes levels, right? Slight weight transfer to the front foot before he comes back. Giving different looks. Look at how just for a second, right? He's going to lean all his weight onto his front foot, right? Makes a lecky, right? Think a shot's coming. Watch the rhythm that they have as he's doing that. Watch Selecki's hands come up. As he's shifting his weight, because of this active guard, this is the same timing that he would throw a jab off of. So Selecki says, I've seen this before. Get my guard up, right? Get my guard up. Now look at this, how he transfers his weight back. Front foot, back foot, into a jab, right? And then watch how his, his shoulder rocks forward, right? This motion right here is extremely important for him hiding his left hands. And this motion again here, when he changes levels here, boom, and then he transfers his weight ever so slightly, seeing if Selecki is going to punch at him when he transfers his weight. He's testing the waters right here to see when Selinsky, Selecki Selinsky, is going to be throwing punches at him. And he says, oh, you're not going to be throwing punches at me there? So he goes back to his rhythm, right? Again, watch this motion, right? Transfer his weight to his back leg, crouching forward. Transfer his weight to his front foot, right? And Selecki's kind of controlling him. Watch Selecki, watch Selinsky's active guard as he's as Andrade transfers his weight boom right boom every time Selinsky has to give him a different look he's like oh, okay I know it's coming and now the same motion right here right changes levels right and as he's coming forward boom flash the lead hand and then throws a straight left hand and this is all off of the patterns that he's creating 
to hide his offense because now he can get momentum and start transferring his weight into his shots without his opponent assuming that every time he does that, it's going to be a punch. Whereas against Charlo, when you have Charlo doing it, every time he transfers his weight, it's going to be a punch. Oh, punch, punch, just move, just move, punch, 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 right? Punch, punch, punch every single time. But Andrade is able to sneak his shots in there by using these subtle weight transfers to hide them. As he as he just moves around the ring, normally he's able to use this motion to create his first layer of offense, right? Now watch this motion right here. He's going to change levels and then transfer his weight to his front foot. And that's his one-two right there. He's going to do the same thing here. Boom, boom. It's the same motion. Boom, one-two. Transfer, uh, whoops. Um... We'll do it in a little slow more, sorry. But change levels, and then as he's going forward, gosh darn it, change levels, this is his jab, and then that's his his right hand as he transfers his weight to his front foot. Change levels, jab, and then transfer his weight to his, his front foot. It's the same motion that he's using. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. It's the same motion to hide his shots, and he does a great job of walking Selinski into these shots. And again, the same motion, right? Change levels, and then hides this straight left hand. And Selinski barely gets out of the way of that one. But he knows every time he transfers weight, it's going to be a right. It could be a right hand, and that's a way that he can control his opponent. Boom, and transfer his weight again, landing a big left hand there, and then again, transferring his weight and able to hide these shots and make them harder to see um, and doing a great job of, of connecting against Zelensky, uh kind of all night and because of the active guard and the weight transfers. Now, Andrade does have one flaw that I don't like. When he gets fainted, he kind of drops back and puts all his weight on his back leg like he's going to move in a straight line back, right? And this is because when he transfers his weight to slip the first punch, he doesn't turn his hips at all. Notice the first punch is going to be the jab feint here that he's looking to parry, but he doesn't transfer his weight to his back leg after he's rotating his hips um, up top or up, rotating his shoulders up top. So he gets stuck in this position, and, and Selensky is able to land a straight left hand. He does that a few times against him, um, and we'll see a few more clips here. But um, as he comes forward, this is the jab feint, right? And now he's transferring his weight into his his straight right hand, which he's able to walk Andrade into, right? Jab, feint, bop, right there. And now he's already fallen for the feint. And what I want you to watch is Andrade's feet, right? When he goes to get away from the jab and he, he transfers his weight, so notice his weight is on his front foot here. He doesn't transfer his hip. He doesn't turn his hip on his front foot uh, into his back leg. So he doesn't allow him after he gets fainted and he freezes up doesn't allow him to move away from his opponent. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that correctly, but um, you'll see it a little bit better here. When he gets fainted, see how he's pulling back like this? He already got fainted once, but notice on his front foot, his heel is in the ground, but you can see his heel is, on his, is in, his, in the ground on his back foot as well. So when he gets fainted by the jab, he's just kind of moving straight back and he winds up getting walked into that that shot now that's the only part of his defense that i don't really like um is that it's really easy to feint him and get him out of position uh so you can land a shot particularly the straight right hand um just like against charlo uh charlo had the same problem right where um and i don't know why brian adams didn't throw more right hands maybe he's a left-handed fighter uh that fights in southpaw or fights orthodox i'm not sure but um but you can see that they're both kind of easy to walk into shots but andrade is you know not only did Andrade fight a fighter that would destroy Brandon Adams, Selinski would absolutely dominate that guy from pillar to post. Um, he would beat the crap out of Brandon Adams like no joke. I'd put I'd put a hundred thousand dollars on that. I'd put every penny I have on that fight. I don't have a hundred thousand dollars, but you know, I would bet that Selinski would just dominate him, you know, and knock him out. Um, and you saw that Brandon Adams had a lot of success against Charlo. Even though he didn't really win any rounds, he was able to land shots and stop uh, stop Jamal Charlo from landing punches himself. Now, 
if you're like me, you're kind of thinking, okay, so where do each of these two fighters go? You know, both are calling out Canelo. They want the payday. Um, I'm not sure if either one of them are calling out Triple G. I think Andrade is calling out Triple G. But let's just think, let's just assume that um, that Canelo is going to fight uh, Smith next. I think, I'm not sure which Smith it is, but he's going to fight one of the Smith brothers again. Um that means that Canelo is not going to be... Oh, oh, also, I think Canelo might also be injured right now. I'm not sure. I think I read something about that. But um, if Canelo's out of the mix, that means that all of these fighters only have the other fighters in the middleweight division to fight, right? Number one, aside from Canelo, is Golovkin. He's probably the biggest payday as well, aside from Canelo. But um, uh, there's, there's him. I think Danny Jacobs is moving up. There's... Billy Joe Saunders, but I think someone told me, um, uh, my boxing coach told me that he moved up. Oh, yeah, because he didn't make weight. Also, he got caught for steroids. Man, that fucker. But um, also, um, who's that guy? David Lemieux. I'm not sure if David Lemieux is still fighting in the middleweight division or not either. Um, but there's David Lemieux. Um, off, also, there's um, Selinski. He's a very good fighter. He's been getting a lot of good fights. He's been giving some good fights too, even though he kind of got shut out in this fight. Um, um, he's still a very good fighter, and I expect him to get more fights. Um, but uh, as far as which one of these guys is, is ready to really take the next step, I do not think Charlo is ready to fight an elite fighter yet. I think that I think that Golovkin would just dominate him he'd probably stop him in two or three rounds uh he might even just knock him out in the first round um he's just too easy to walk into punches he doesn't have an active guard um and on top of that if you're gonna if you're gonna be stale and you're gonna be stuck on the line you have to have perfect technique it has to be perfect because it's it becomes so easy to walk you into shots and the fact that he just moves back in a straight line getting away from shots without transferring his weight is very bad and the fact that he does that moving forward too when he hops forward you know it winds up becoming really easy to time you and Golovkin has amazing timing um so I don't think Charlo is ready for Golovkin I think him fighting Billy Joe Saunders if Billy Joe Saunders would have won it was at one in 160 that would be a stupid move too to be honest I think that if if on if Charlo is looking for a fight in the middleweight division oh man I'm not sure who he could fight in the top 10. Um, I would I would probably say the best test he could get would be for him to fight Selinski himself and kind of see where he stands versus the rest of the middleweight division because we saw how Andrade dealt with Selinski. We saw how Danny Jacobs dealt with Selinski. Um, and that was a close fight. Uh, I, he, I think he gave Danny Jacobs a lot of problems. I'm not... <laughs> I don't know if I agreed with any of the scores, the scorecards for the Danny Jacobs fight. I thought Slinsky did much better than he than was represented in the the scores, but you know, um, I might have that wrong. Even though I did rewatch that fight recently, but um, but I don't think that Charlo is ready for Canelo um, or Golovkin. I think both of them would absolutely dominate him. I don't think that he's he's even half as good as he needs to be to fight those guys. Um, Whereas I think Andrade is right on point. I think he's ready. I think, you know, he needs to work a little bit on his defense. He needs to work on his slipping the right hand. Um, because if he's moving back in a straight line like you see right here, he's going to be walked into body shots and head shots all night long. Um, he's going to have to work on that, catching the jab maybe, rather than um, rather than slipping it so that he can save his slip and his, his commitment. Um for the straight right hands um maybe you know doing a little bit more feinting and controlling of his opponent's lead hands which is usually very common in the southpaw stance versus the orthodox but um but i i think that andrade might be ready to fight one of those guys even though i think that i would favor both of them to beat andrade um i think that he is getting ready uh and he's ready he's at the point where he sh he should be fighting um you know for the titles, having titles, and fighting other champions. Um, I don't think that he needs any more tune-up fights. I don't think he needs to be avoided anymore. Um, uh, I think that he should get the fight, and I'd, I'd really like it. Now, here's the really interesting part, is 
they both fought on the same night, Charlo and Andrade, or Andrade, um, which means that, and they both won, which means that they could fight each other. Now, I think this would be a terrible option for both fighters. Not only do I think that, not only do I think Andrade would knock Charlo out, which is bad for Charlo, right? I think that Andrade would just straight kill him. Um, I don't think he's even close to ready to fight um, to fight Andrade. But everyone seems to think that Charlo is su- is super good. That both of the Charlos are really good, and I, I don't agree. And if everyone's rating the Charlos really highly, and Andrade knocks Charlo out like I think he would. No one's going to fight Andrade either. And I think that that would be bad for for Andrade as well. Um, and uh, it might be good for him like in the short term. But in the long term, if he wants to get a fight with Canelo or, or, um, or Triple G, then I think it would be a bad move. Um, unless he wants to fight, knock him out, and then hold on to a title for three, four, five more fights. Uh, fighting people who are just grateful to fight for a title as he's avoided by the other cream of the crop um, and then eventually get a payday later down the road. Kind of like um, like uh, what they were trying to do with Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and Tyson Fury, you know. Or I'll just say Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder. But um, I think it would be a bad move for him to fight, uh, to fight, um, to fight Charlo. And it would be a very bad move for Charlo. He would get absolutely crushed. Um, I think Korbov is a southpaw, right? And Korbov, you know, a lot of people said that Korbov won that fight. And Andrade is way better than that dude. And that guy wasn't bad either. Like, I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of those um, those European fighters. I think they're usually pretty, really well schooled. But, um, yeah. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what you, let me know who you guys think each fighter should fight. Um... And yeah, also, don't forget to check out FoutsBoxing.com where I'm writing boxing articles. Um, I'm also going to be having a learning platform where eventually I'll be lo- uploading a lot of the drill videos that you guys have been asking for um, and a lot of training videos. I'll be having a lot of training videos on there eventually. My marketing manager is probably going to kill me for talking about it, but um, as soon as we can get that that rolling, um, we're going to look to to start uploading videos and uh, some other other really 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 cool stuff, but um, that's going to be in the future. Um, in order for me to upload videos to that website, it's going to cost me a lot of money for like the servers and hosting and stuff. So I will be doing like a bit of um, you know fundraising in the future for that kind of stuff. But um, but anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks guys.